Now getting into hodographs. So a hodograph is a chart used to analyze vertical wind shear. Um, it can be used to quantify bulk shear, storm motion, storm relative wind, streamwise vorticity, and storm relative velocity. So that's a lot. We'll get into that in the second video quite a bit more, but just suffice it to say this um, particular chart is extremely useful for understanding where tornadoes might form and maybe even how strong they might be. And this is the uh, this is an example photograph from May 3rd, 1999, a violent tornado outbreak in central Oklahoma, um, showing a pretty familiar shape for photographs. Um, this is known as sickle shaped photograph. And basically what this corresponds to is um, a pretty bad day. If you see something like this co-located with Cape, which was you know, the case on May 3rd, then you stand the risk of tornadoes. All right, how to construct a hodograph. These are constructed on a polar coordinate chart. So that means that the radials are tied to, to wind direction. So if you can imagine, this is like north, east, south, and west. And the circles are tied to wind magnitude. So you start at the center and as you move out, 10, 20, so 10 knots, 20 knots, 30 knots, 40 knots, and so on. So let's construct an example hodograph. So in this case, you see a wind profile that's color coded for its height. So the surface wind is southeast at 15 knots. One kilometer is southwest at 40 knots. Three kilometers is west southwest at 45 knots. Five kilometers is westerly at 55 knots. And finally, six kilometers is west northwesterly at 65 knots. So how do you plot this on the hodograph? Well, first you place your wind vector at the origin, then you mark the tip of the wind vector, and then you repeat at each level. And once you've done that, you connect all the vector tips. So this is how this would look. So the surface wind, you start at the center and you plot it in the direction of the wind. And as far as the wind magnitude will take you, in this case, 15 knots, so you go basically one of these um, circles plus a half out and then one kilometer is from the southwest so you plot it in this direction it's a little longer right because the vector corresponds uh, the length of the vector corresponds to the magnitude of the wind and three kilometers um, is from the southwest so it points in that direction and then you see so on five kilometers and six kilometers you get you get the picture and then you draw vectors between these, the tips of these vectors. So there's a tip right here, 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 and so on. So you draw a line from here to here, do that here. We'll color it red to represent the level at which it's at, one kilometer to three kilometer, three to five, and five to six. Okay. Notice that the hodograph trace, which is right along here, this is the hodograph itself is the difference of wind between two levels. You know what this difference is called? That's right, it's vertical wind shear, vertical wind shear. So basically the hodograph is a visual representation of vertical wind shear. Um, and so then, so then we're gonna look at storm motion. So storm motion, um, there was a paper by Matt Bunkers in 2000 that describes a method for finding storm motion for right moving and left moving supercells. So the technique is here on the left. You first find the average wind, and then you draw the one half to 5.5 kilometer shear vector. And then you draw a line of orthogonal to that, passing through the average wind and then plot motion 15 knots to the left and right of that intersection. So we'll go through that exercise here. So the first step is to plot the average wind, which it's a little bit of a guess here, but roughly uh, here is what I'd put. So maybe say um, it looks like 35 knots east northeast is the average wind. Okay, and the next step is to draw the one half to 5.5 kilometer shear vector. So, you know, half kilometer is probably roughly here. 5.5 uh, is roughly here. So you can draw it from here to here. So that little green line represents that shear vector. 
and then you want to draw a line that's orthogonal to the screen line that does pass through that average wind. And then where you see that intersection, you plot 15 knots left and right of that. So this will be the uh, direction and speed of your left mover, and this will be the direction and speed of your right mover. So for the right mover, it looks like it's moving east southeast at roughly 25 knots, let's say. And the left mover in this case is moving to the east northeast, almost northeast at it looks like 10, 20, 30, 45 knots. So quite a bit fast moving. So, so with that, well, thank you for your attention. And if you thought this video was quality and something that helped you, if you don't mind uh, liking and subscribing, that would be very much appreciated by me. And I will let you know when that next video is released. Thank you very much.